back for another edition of the PBR Podcast here in North Carolina. I'm Brandon Hall. He's Matt Payne. Matt, big weekend. How you doing? A uh, big weekend in Greenville and Wilmington. Uh, saw a lot of kids, a lot of talented kids, and uh, looking forward to doing it again this weekend. Yeah, wrapping it up as the high school season is approaching. I, I was actually had a chance to fly out to Chicago and see, I think, 70 of the top you know MLB draft candidates in the high school level, and you know, there were some dudes that put up some, you know, really, really unique performances. So we'll, we'll jump into all of that and be able to dive into the player analysis and continue to kind of um, update you on what we're seeing and what we're feeling and what we're thinking about these players. But, you know, just a reminder, everybody out there watching and listening, you know, hit that subscribe button. That way, every time we post one of these things, you get an alert. We really appreciate the numbers um, that we've seen here lately. We're going to continue to try and put it, push out as much good content on good players across North Carolina as we can. And, Matt, let's jump into it. High school season's right around the corner. Um, you know, I know up in your area, those guys are probably starting to get ready. You've probably seen them out and about, things like that. And um, any memories from your your first high school season and, and getting ready in the tryout process back in, who, what were you? Was that 2001, 2002 when you were a freshman? Something like that. Uh, 2000, I believe. Yeah, 2000. Graduated high school in 2004. Um I played basketball, so I was actually a little late getting out. So, you know, basketball season finishes, you miss a couple of days and go out and being a freshman, you know, you, you don't know if they know who you are or not. And you go out there just trying to show what you can do and, and outwork and outplay everybody. So you, you go out on the field and it's going a hundred percent from day one. You don't have the, the comfort of them knowing who you are. And it's just all about going out and trying to prove yourself and, uh, we ended up having a great year that year. We went undefeated um, in that JV ball our freshman year. year. Freshman year, so uh, ended up being a good year for us. When, was there any anxiety being a dual guy and trying to figure out, you know, how you're going to balance that? And obviously, you touched on, do they know who I am? You know, what was that process like for you? I mean, were you bouncing back and forth between coaches and trying to make sure they knew? Yeah, uh, yeah, you bounced back and forth. I think at the being young and and probably not very smart there wasn't a lot of thought into into arm care and things like that you know you go out there and you throw your bullpen and you throw it 100 percent, and then you got the shortstop and you throw it as hard as you can across the infield and looking back probably not very smart but uh you know you got to go out and try to prove yourself and and all we knew was go out and play hard good deal good deal i know mine was a little i was a little before you so we're not going to necessarily name the date but i was baseball only by that point i i'd kind of aged out of basketball i my my athletic ability my height came later i'm six three right you know six two six three depending on which doctor i go to but um (laughs) you know when i entered high school i was like five nine ninety five pounds and so middle school kind of weaned me out of the basketball i I love playing i played soccer in middle school but that wasn't going to be something i was going to do and so I was straight baseball from the time I got there and, you know, was able to do the preseason workouts um, in the summer with the football team, which our, our head baseball coach was, a, I think, the defensive coordinator. So I was around him, you know, going through the weight training there and trying to get a jump on that. And as we got into the preseason workouts um, during the winter session, got a jump on that. Um, but still a lot of anxiety um, trying to figure out, how I fit. And, you know, we were, I remember running hundred yard sprints and at five, nine, five, 10, one uh, hundred pounds, you're not built to run a hundred yards. It, it was a it freaking hurt. Um, but getting through all that, I, I was, I was in my happy place when I got on the mound because I knew I could throw strikes and I was left-handed and I had a chance. So the anxiety went away on the mound, but offensively and defensively, and the conditioning stuff, and especially the weight room stuff, was a was a kind of a jolt to my system. Um, but you kind of get through it. And I, I played JV my freshman year, and we had a really good JV season. Um, you know, and I was fortunate enough to play varsity as a sophomore on a really good club. Um, but I know there, there's some younger players going out there right now. Biggest advice you give them is they're going through their first tryout. What what what's something that maybe stuck with you, whether it was in high school or college, you're trying to prepare for that that first ever tryout and you could talk to these guys a little bit. It's, I think it's tough when you're a young guy sometimes with just being confident and, and your ability and, and knowing that you are going to make mistakes and there's no way you can play perfect. But when you do make those mistakes, just 
stay positive, stay confident and, and just keep going, keep going hard, keep working hard. And, uh, don't let, don't let your mistakes or uncertainty, uh, affect your confidence. Yeah. I, I think it's well said that, you know, it's a game that's filled with mistakes. I, and I think mistakes can be good because they're learning, they're learning, um, points, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a teaching point. You make a mistake as long as you don't make that mistake over and over and over, but making mistakes can be good. Go hard enough that you are making mistakes. Um, it's, it's okay to go so hard. You get physically exhausted. Um, and then you can try to push through that. It's okay to tell your teammate he's doing a good job. It's okay to be a leader in those types of situations, you know, and, and if you're really worried about trying to make that club, you know, what can you do that's different? You know, if, if you're, if your best tool is, is being fast, then, then show that off as much as you can. If you're kind of an average tools guy, then, you know, be a great teammate, make, make that coach, you know, really have to consider not having a great person on the bench with them. And, um, you know, we wish everybody as they're going through that process next week, um, you know, and into the week after as we get ready for the high school season, best of luck as they're going through it. But um, now we're going to turn our attention to some of the players that are getting ready for the high school season. You were in Wilmington on Sunday, um, Team Beast, North Carolina, new program, new facility, uh, open their doors for their team to be able to go through a PBR scout day. And then on top of that, we hosted our preseason uh, ID in Wilmington, just a chance to ID some players in that coastal region. Um, I was not there, obviously, but, you know, give me some of your thoughts. What did you think of the facility and what did you think of some of the players that were on hand? Uh, brand new facility, well set up. Uh, we were with the Team Beast guys last year and getting to go back in and see them again. They have a lot of young players. Uh, they're trying to build it from the ground up and excited to see where they go with that. And then obviously having a, a new facility where guys can come in and get their work in is – I think will will be huge in in the Wilmington area as big as baseball is there and uh, part of the Wilmington ID uh, Grant Pertle from Laney High School uh, he come in and threw and he's athletic build and and quick arm and uh, he was cutting his fastball a little bit but it was coming out of the hand good I think he's going to be a be a guy that some colleges need to see see this spring um, yeah he, he was see. a guy that pitched well at Laney last year six four one eighty. Had some big outings for him. Was a guy that they they really leaned on uh, down the stretch. Looks like he was you know 83, 86. But the big thing about him was the spin rate on the fastball jumped out. Average spin rate on the fastball 24, 90. You know, so as, as that 86 becomes 88, 89, you know that fastball is going to continue to play up. 86 is probably playing closer to you know like a 90 mile an hour fastball now with the way that ball is jumping on hitters. Yeah, he really he really stood out during his pin. I know uh, one of the hitters that, that impressed you, a uh, young man named Zach Steer. What do you What do you have on Zach? Yes, uh, strong build, uh, had some strength in his hands, and just looked comfortable in the box during his BP rounds, and a lot of balls on the barrel. And I look for him to have a big year in, in high school this year. We've been fortunate. We've seen a bunch of players from Cleveland High School, where Zach's from. Six foot, one sixty five, shortstop, right handed pitcher, right right. Um, plays with Tri-State Arsenal in the summer, but that, that Cleveland club is going to be interesting. Obviously, they got uh, Caden Morris on the front end of their their rotation, but we've seen several of their guys, and you know, if Zach's got a chance to anchor that lineup a little bit, that may be a team we hear about in the spring. For sure. Um, on Saturday, um, obviously a little bit bigger event in terms of uh, you know the, the number of players there. Um, it's a facility we've been to, but we hosted our preseason All-State East uh, in Greenville, North Carolina, back at Next Level. Trent Britt, uh, owner of Next Level Training Center. And I know we've talked about it a little bit earlier because we were there with the East Coast Dodgers, but love being there. Great facility. Um, and, and the setup allows us to do a lot, Matt. What, give, me, give me a little feedback on that setup, especially for winter events. It's, it's perfect for us. You know, we have the big open area where guys can take BP and see the ball fly. We even went two hitters at the same time this week. Uh, which was awesome. Um, makes it easy to get defense done in there. And then while we are in the big area, there's, I think, six cages back there. So, you know, guys can get swings in and they don't feel rushed and, and you can just get a lot of things done in that area. You know, always clean. Um, the, the people that work there are always gracious. It is, a, I think it's a membership facility. So they really work hard to make sure their members are taken care of and we're in there kind of after hours which, you know, made for a little bit of a late night for us, for them, very appreciative of their time. 
Um, but if you're in the Greenville area and you need some swings or you need some reps or, you know, hit those guys up because it is, it's a tremendous facility and, you know, following them on social media. I know Alex, Alec Burleson, who's got a chance to stick with the Cardinals big league club this year was in there. There was a, a, a pro scout um, DJ with the, uh, the giants uh, was in there. Um, I know Pitt community college works out in there. I know uh, East Carolina's club team works out in there. My bet is that East Carolina's, uh, varsity team and coach Godwin and those guys probably are able to get in there if they actually have to and aren't able to use their indoor facilities for one reason or another. Um, but just a beautiful facility that allows us to get a lot done. And, and, and Matt, the day started uh, with bullpens and we're, you know, two, two, uh, two track men uh, double barreling the bullpens, trying to get through the day a little bit and, you know, digesting some of the numbers of what we, what we saw Let's start with a young man that had the best fastball at the event in terms of pure velocity, Andrew Wallen. What do you think of Andrew? Six seven right hander, um, very impressive pin. Um, and watching him throw, I, I knew it was good. And then I, I walked over and asked Borowski what his velo was, and he was like, "He's already been up to ninety one." And um, to be this early in the year and come out and do that, and I believe that may have been his first showcase too. And um, Easy, no easy to like, <laughs> easy to like what we saw there. Another name that, that popped out to me was a young man that we've seen before, left-handed pitcher from Apex Friendship and C35's 2025 national team, uh, Luke Hemrick, uh, 6'2", 177. Um, you know, we've seen Luke in the past um, with scout days, I guess when he was with TPA. Um, you know, what, what was your – how has he continued to develop and what did you like about him on Saturday? Standing next to him, I feel like I felt like he had grown some. Uh, looked a little taller, body looked a little thicker. Um, he just he fills up the strike zone. Um, I like how he can spin it. Um, little tough angle he creates that I think he can he can run the ball in on right handers and and also keep it away from left handers. One name that I got throughout the process, kind of leading up to this and talking to high school coaches and specifically the high school coach at, at Cary. Um, and he's very, very high, and he's going to have a really good club. So for him to be high on a freshman when he's got the kind of club that he's got this year with some of the arm talent he has on the front of the rotation, um, you know, says something. But William Vetter, a 2026 um, uh, right-handed pitcher, 5'11", 170, plays for the American Dream, which we did a scout day with at the end of the fall. Um, you know, and, and he was impressive. So what, what did you see with with William? Quick arm, uh, very athletic on the mound. And then, you know, the slider spin was up in, up around 2,700. Um, I was actually looking at a kid on the other side and, and glanced over and, and saw him and didn't, didn't look to see who it was. I'm like, you know, who's this kid? And uh, did not realize he was just a freshman. Uh, yeah. First look, first look at him. So uh, kids got a chance to. A little bit of a baby face, but that 5'11", 170, there's already some strength there. Yeah, and it's he's got a chance to throw throw hard one day. 85, 86 in the bullpen. Again, high, high spin rate, 26, 22 average on the fastball. Um, that, that that pitch has a chance to kind of, you know, he's still learning how to manipulate that pitch a little bit, I would I would guess. And as velocity continues to climb, we're going to see if he can really make that, that pitch climb in the zone create swing and miss, um, attacking the zone, elevate that fastball. And then can he pitch off that fastball with that slider, which, you know, at 2,700 is going to have some bite and snap as he learns to mature that pitch. So, um, you know, a lot to like with William Vetter, where he is now, and, and definitely the upside. Um, you know, Matt, let's turn our, our attention to some of the position players that were there. Um, you know, just off the top of my head, I'm, I'm looking at a, a list of players as well. Um who who stood out to you in the box? Who were some of the guys that you really liked as, we, as you were watching those guys take their swings? Uh, some some of the uncommitted guys, Alex Farrell, Jr., 2024, I believe it's Southern Wayne. Um, physical, um, hit balls hard with ease. He he really, really impressed. I uh, got a comp on him, uh, John Newton, that uh, we saw yeah. several times. That uh, He's at UNCW now, I believe. but. Uh, I mean, he, he smoked the ball in BP. Uh, Tate Nelson, a 2026 from New Hanover. Um, he stood out throughout the whole night. Uh, really good defensive actions, athletic in the box, and I, I believe he was up to 86 on the mound as well. 
I know one of the other names that you gave me was Ian Williams. Um, Ian is a 2025 outfielder out of Wake Forest High School. Plays with the dirt bags. 5'8", 140. So the body's still maturing. Um, but definitely, you know, some quickness in there. He's run a 6.69 for us in the past. He ran a 3.7630. Um, 21.2 mile per hour max run speed. Uh, and so that, that 60 could get better as he continues to, to put on strength and can maintain that high-end run speed. What did you see from Ian on the day? Uh, left-handed hitter. He's not going to jump off the charts with his, his metrics and exit belows and things like that, uh, but he knows how to put the barrel on the ball. And uh, like you said, he's athletic. He runs well and been fortunate to see him play in games, and he can really go get it in center field. No. Well, left He's a part of a, a run outfielder that plays defense at a high level. I mean, that's that's a guy that we'll probably be eyeing as we start marking our our plans for the future games in August. And obviously, playing at Wake Forest, he's going to be surrounded by talent, so he's probably going to see some pitches to hit um, with guy with the likes of Luke Stevenson sitting there behind him. Yeah, that's a a loaded Wake Forest team that I think has a good chance to open number one in our Power Twenty Five with well, uh, they have, preview. Yeah. Yeah, they have a uh, Matt Payne, <laughs> Coop, Coop, Cooper Allen. He was there. Uh, UNC Wilmington committee also goes to Wake Forest. Yep. Um, I think he's he's a legit two way talent. Um, up to eighty eight or eighty nine on the mound. Uh, he he really drives the ball to the opposite opposite field well and uh, can hit. And then Ethan Britton, Duke commit, shortstop. Uh, I mean, he's, he's fun to watch play defense and another guy that that has has a, does a good job of putting the barrel in the baseball and. Like you said, Luke Stevenson, who you who you got to see this weekend, that was a that's going to got a chance to be a really good high school team. Yeah, let's stay on the on some of the committed guys here because it, it is something we get asked a lot. Should committed guys come to our showcases and come and you know we try to be honest with those guys. There, there are certain events they may want to come, like our pro case, which is coming up this upcoming weekend. If we haven't seen you and we don't have a pro grade on you, and even though you've gotten better, if we haven't seen it, we can't mark it and can't invite you. Um, you know, so I think sometimes those guys will come for that reason. I think other times guys are just trying to kind of measure where they're at. Um, what did you think of, you know, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think we had eight committed guys show up. What did you think of some of those, you know, the, the process those guys are going through as they're getting ready for their high school season? They, they definitely continue to get better. Uh, Mason Hughes, uh, a guy who we, we've seen a few times and, and like a lot. For me, he'd always been more of a, an infielder. He hits left-handed. Um, right. He swung the bat really, be- really well in Greenville, but he, he's also up to 87 now off the mound. And yeah, uh, every he's time, a every guy Charleston Southern, no doubt. Yeah, every time you see him, the body's got stronger. Uh, Jeremiah McLemore, Mount Olive commit. Yep. Um, very mm-hmm. impressive what he's he's done to his body. That's what I was getting uh, ready to ask. I know we we saw him we saw him when he was younger, um, and. and there was obvious strength, um, but now listed at 6'1", 200, and, and he looks the broad shoulders. He's beat up a little bit. You know, there's strength even in his necklines and his face. Um, you know, so th- it's a body transformation. Jeremiah has done a really good job there. Um, but with losing the weight, you know, there's always that fear of, okay, what's going to happen with my power? Did you get a chance to see him hit? And how are his power numbers? He still he still has the power. I do yep. think he's in that transition of I'm um, I'm lighter. Uh, my body's a lot different of of learning how to use that again and, and building up, getting strong again within in his new lean build and and not what it was. But I talked to him a little bit and I, I told him I said I think your sophomore year of college you got a chance to really see really see a big jump by then. That's a good point. And we already saw the quick. He, he, he's running, he ran a one eight two ten 10 split, which is a really solid time. He ran a four four three thirty, which is much better than what we've seen him run in the past. So lighter on his feet, he's going to have a chance to play more, more positions, potentially out Mount Olive, give the, that coaching staff a better chance to get him in a lineup early on in his career. Um, the other name I was intrigued by, um, and, and wanted some feedback is Colin Woolard. Colin Woolard out of w- uh, Wayne Country Day, 2025 right-handed pitcher from Virginia Tech, listed at 6'1", 195, plays with the Canes uh, National Club in the summer, 
you know, it, it's a it's a physical build at 6'1", 195, broad shoulders, there's some strength present. Um, did you get a chance to bear down on Colin at all, and what did you see? Definitely has arm strength. Um, I thought he had, had excellent feel for his off-speed pitches as well, and it seems like Wayne Country Day just – always has a, a power five commit and, you know, he's committed to Virginia tech. And I think he, even though he's physical now, I think he has a chance to, to add more as, as he develops. Good athlete ran a sub four thirty yard, um, you know, showed 94, five exit velocity with the bat. I think that, I think from what I've heard, um, the future is probably on the mound, but you know, obviously a good athlete's going to be able to help Wayne country day in a lot of ways. And, you know, still young. So, you know, we may look up in a couple of years and, you know, he, he may be a guy that's got a chance to transition and be a dual guy, at least early on in his career in the ACC. And, you know, then the, they, those guys with in Hokie land can figure out where he's going to fit. Um, it, it's interesting when the, when the when committed guys show up, uh, you know, there's lots of different reasons they can be there, but, you know, a, a lot of times they're just competitive guys that just trying to see where their numbers land. Um, you know, and then you get, on the flip side, you get some guys that are right on the verge of committing and, you know, one good outing, one good uh, number, one, you know, one more thing to put on their resume may flip a, a school into a, a situation where they're able to commit and get the offer they want. I know Evan Barefoot, uh, 2023 outfielder from South Johnston High School, committed to Wingate about two days after the event. We've seen Evan before, um, Rawlings Prospect Scout Day. Uh, right-handed hitter, six foot one sixty-five. The frame's going to handle a lot more strength as he gets stronger, or he gets older and more mature. Just packs on kind of that man strength. But the one thing he has, he has quickness. Um, you know, he, he's he's a one six ten yard split, three seven nine thirty yard spl split, almost twenty mile an hour max speed run guy. Um, you know, he's shown in he's shown velocity, outfield velo up to ninety three. Um, you know, so there's even for the older guys that one more, that one more showcase that one more, whatever that stat was, you know, can kind of push some of those guys over the edge to that commitment as well. Yeah. And I, you know, I think we've had some guys that, that came to the all state events that have earned invites to our pro case this weekend. And, yep. um, you know, we'll have the all American game coming up that, uh, you know, I think North Carolina has a chance to get some games too. And then, the super 60 where you were at this weekend um, they can get invites to that as well. And uh, I know you saw a lot of talented players up there. Uh, we obviously had two kids from North Carolina, but uh, I know you like some guys out of state as well. Yeah. I, you know, the, the, the catching group was really good. Um, and the way the day rolls is guys show up and they run. Um, and then we start going to the offensive stuff and it's just a blur of hitters or swinging wood. And it's just good hitter after good hitter after good hitter. And, you know, it's a BP setting with, with advanced hitters. You're, you're kind of looking for guys that stand out or special. Max Clark, uh, who's got a chance to be the 1-1 the one, one pick overall, showed up and took BP, and it's a really, really whippy bat. I mean, there's a ton of bat speed in there, and he's on the barrel, and the ball's just, you know, jumping off his bat. And, you know, the, the thing with him is he's got a chance to run, got a chance to play center field as well on top of being a premium left-handed bat. So we'll see how that plays out with another guy that we know fairly well, Walker Jenkins. Um who, who may be, you know, also in that one, one conversation. And those two high school guys are probably the leading candidates in terms of high school guys for that position. There'll be some arms that pop into it. Um, and then there'll also be a lot of college guys that have, you know, want to put their stamp on that, but you know, a name from the catching group that really stood out St. John's commit Adam Agresti. Um, it, it's, you, you talk about elite arm strength. He has it, you know, you're, you're there with, the top 15 of the top 20 catchers in the country and his arm talent stood out like Dan Marino's would have, I'm dating myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, who's the, who's the bills quarterback? Um, blanking Josh, uh, let's just Josh, Allen. Mahomes. Yeah, Josh Allen or Mahomes, like those guys, arm talent stood out, even though when they were at the pro, the co combine and all the other guys have arm talent, then there's this guy. And the arm talent was just incredible. Um, he was up to 99.2 his exit velocity. I mean, he, he was on the barrel a bunch. He ran a 6.75. He ran a, a 1.63 split. He's listed at 6.3, 225. So we start talking about what's the difference between a guy who has a chance to be drafted out of high school and some of the really good players. 
Sometimes it's just physicality. 6'3", 225, and a 6'7 runner. You know, that that's special. And then out of the crouch, he was 87. That That's hard to do. You know, that is that is an elite, elite arm. And it wasn't like he was spraying it everywhere. Every single throw was on the center of the bag, belt high. Every one. You know, and I think sometimes you can make your first throw and you make your second throw and you can get in a groove and you showcase. Maybe that's maybe that's the best showcase he's ever had in his life. But with a, a hundred to hundred and twenty high level scouts, you know, not just area guys. There's cross checkers and scouting uh, assistant scouting directors, scouting directors in the house. That's a pretty good day to have your best day ever. And so, he, uh, if I'm St. John's, I'm probably going to Plan B because I don't I, <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it to campus. But I don't know him very well. Obviously, not a North Carolina guy. He is uh, he's from New York, attending Kennedy Catholic. Um, and plays with real ballers, a club team, honestly, I've, I haven't heard of. So, um, But our guys in New York and Pennsylvania freaking love this guy. And so it was good to see a guy that, that, that is so well, so highly thought of really turn out the way he did. Um, you got to see see Max Clark in person this weekend. How how does he compare to, to Walker Jenkins from our state? So it's, yeah, and that's what people are going to, Walker Jenkins is more physical. Walker Jenkins looks more like what you think big leaguers look like. I was a little shocked at Max, you know, the physicality wasn't there, but unofficially, and, you know, and he did not run at the Super 60, you know, there there are people talking about he's running 6'3 or better, which, you know, everybody's watch is a little different, and, you know, that, that may be some home cooking, but you know, somebody said he ran a six one. You can't you can't turn a six six into a six one. That's 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 really hard to do. You can turn a six four into a six one. You can turn a six three into a six one on, on a watch, cheating a little bit. Um, but six one is special. So I don't know if somebody's gonna see him run that at some point. But if he's if he's got that type of talent and he's got that type, that's an eighty tool, and then he's got a chance to project as a left handed hitter and stick in the middle of the field. That's going to be the separator. Do people think Walker has a chance to stick in the middle of the field? And if he doesn't, is the power number going to be big enough to stick on a corner and compare with a an eighty type tool in that run? Um, faster than Michael Gupton? So the, I mean, that's you're talking faster I, than Michael yeah, Gupton with those I, times. I I, 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 ha, I I would doubt that. Having seen Michael Gupton run for us and then in game and then also on a track. In, in Team USA track gear, I find it hard to believe that a runner like him wouldn't have been identified by Team by USA Track and Field. Yeah. <laughs> so that and, and I, I, there's no reason for me to to say that. It's just it's my own personal doubt because I've been doing this so long. And there's I guess, I guess that negative mindset sometimes you're like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. But yeah. he, he's a good looking athlete. Walker's physicality. If the if the bat number matches up, you know, for me, then I'm taking the bigger guy, unless it's an 80 run tool that projects to be an 80 run tool at the big league level. So uh, it's a great question. And I'm watching those guys, but it was an impressive round, a couple rounds of BP. Um, there's no doubt about that. And we actually learned from our, our HQ, um, they're doing some, uh, I guess. I don't know what to call them episodes on players across the country. And um, they've been following Max around a little bit. So there's going to be some kind of behind the scenes real life with Max Clark or whatever that's going to be. And I think that'll give people in North Carolina an interesting comparison because you get to know Max fairly well. And I think Walker's so highly thought of a lot of people in this state, a lot of baseball people in the state think they have a pretty good feel for him just because he's, again, he's, he's such a great person in terms of what we see him doing day in and day out, how highly thought of he is in that region with his club team, you know, things of that sort. So I think there's a lot of baseball players in North Carolina that feel like they know Walker Jenkins and now they'll be able to watch Max Clark and kind of compare him on their own. Yeah. Walker, Walker Jenkins is a A plus teammate. That, that everything we hear, everything we hear, that's, that's, that's the thing. So, and I think that does go away when you're trying to you're trying to separate high school bats um, because there's a lot of fail rate in high school bats getting to the big leagues, not necessarily in the one one slot, but just in general. That's that's a very tough that's a tough projection and trying to figure out how guys are going to handle failure when they finally do get to a, a level that they 
honestly probably have never failed at in their life. So they get to double A and they, they start figuring out holes. How do those hitters adjust? And do they handle that failure, you know, uh, good enough to continue to advance? Um, and that's, I think, a lot of times the difference between the college bat projection and the high school bat projection. So we're, we're hearing some of this. Them. We're hearing some of the same things about uh, Luke Stevenson as far as, you know, makeup and teammate wise who who was obviously in Chicago this weekend. Yeah, and Luke Luke did nothing to – he came off – and it's hard. When when that's the first thing everybody says, man, great teammate, A++++ A plus, plus, plus makeup. And it, it's, you know, it, it's it's on, on Twitter and it's on Instagram and people are talking him up and he's coming to Chicago and I guarantee other players are checking other players that are coming to Chicago as well. And that's the thing you keep hearing. And then he supersedes it. You know, <laughs> the the A++ person you're hearing about and then you meet him and it's better than what you've been hearing about. That that was impressive. And he sat down with Shooter, um, you know, our, our national scouting director, and he talked with Shooter for about five or ten minutes. And there'll be some stuff coming out on YouTube with that. I had a chance to talk to him before he got there a couple different times. Um, talked to him while he was there and, you know, just just a, an A plus person. Um, and credit to his family, credit to his coaches, credit to the people he's been around. He's just growing up for that. But then you have the talent on top of it. And, and he may have been the best receiver there. Um, he sits in there pretty easy with his hips. His hands work. He's beating pitches to the spot, even 92, 94 mile an hour fastballs with some ride or you know, some, some takeoff on him. He's beating those pitches to the spot, doing a really good job with that. Um, and he had eyes on him at that point because his BP round was one of the best beat two rounds of BP of anybody at the event. Um, just very, very professional backspin line drive gap to gap off the barrel pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch. And just, you know, very professional uh, way he went about his business and, and the balance he has in there, the looseness he has in there, the rhythm he has in there, you know, makes you kind of take notice. Um, uh, 102 mile an hour. This look, listen to these stats. His max in exit velocity was 102. His average exit velocity was 98.7. So in a span of 15 swings, he didn't have a single ball come off his bat more than likely under 96, 95, 96 on an hour. I guess the BP guy has never played against in, an, in a, a setting he's never been in with 120 high-level scouts sitting around him and really no nets. I mean, there's some nets right behind him. But those scouts, they, they kind of go down the lines a little bit. And, you know, you snap hook one, you could light up a scouting director. Um, <laughs> you know, and just really, really professional at bat. He ran a 717, um, you know, which for 6'1, 210 catcher, good. Good enough, mm-hmm. especially on our lasers, because I'm sure that that probably equates with some watches of, of being, you know, seven flat, even under some watches. Um, arm, arm has talent. Uh, the, the feet were, were a little heavy, the direction and, you know, again, it's a showcase. He's catching a guy he's never caught before. He's, he's throwing in an environment he's never thrown in before. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but once he got the ball up and out, the ball really took off out of his hand. Uh, he showed enough accuracy, but 85 out of the crouch. That's, that's an elite number. We talked about aggressive. You know, that that's astronomical. But 85 is an elite number, um, you know, and, and I think with with the the caliber of scouts, the, the level of scouts that were there, plus the reports that all of our, our area guys have on him, you know, Luke's stock just continues to go up. And so uh, it'll be interesting. He, he's a guy that's probably been around it a little bit because his high school had a for uh, he have a first round or two years ago. Khalil Watson. Yep. And so he's been around it. This is not going to be a shock to the system when he shows up and there's scouts there. He, he's seen this before. He's seen a guy handle it. He's taken some good away from it. He's probably taken some bad away from it. And he's going to be able to be relaxed and kind of get in his, in his, um, in his own game. The other part is he's getting the ball on every, you know, every pitch. He's going to be able to touch the ball as a catcher and show something, you know, receiving flexibility, blocking, you know, handling a pitcher, leadership. So even if he's not getting pitches to hit, he's still going to be highly involved in the game and be able to show scouts something. It was a really, really good weekend, not just day, because Luke stood out for the weekend. 
um, while he was there. And it, it was uh, just an impressive young man off the field that did a really good job on the field. Yeah, he's uh, I, I think he can hit. And one thing that stood out to me about him during watching him play in high school is in between innings, um, you know, some guys go 100 percent, you know, on that throwing it down before before the inning starts and other guys are lazy. Uh, he had that just relax. I'm I'm not going 100 percent, but I'm going to I'm going to be accurate, you know, and just that tells tells me that that he's got a got a very good idea of, of what he's doing. And he has a chance to throw really good in game as well. There's just there's a lot of confidence to what he does. You know, and, and I'm, I'm excited for a spring. I know, you know, there's a Chapel Hill commit. And in this state that 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 has a big time draw. Um, but you know, I, I think he's going to be a high enough thought of catcher that he's going to at least have a decision to make after this spring and he can relax and play knowing I'm a good player and I don't have to do extra. I can just go out there and be me and I'm going to have a chance to make a decision and do whatever it is I want to do, whether that's go to college or start my pro career. I'm going to have that opportunity pretty quickly. Yep. There's uh, two good catchers in the state, so uh, has a chance to be another big draft year in North Carolina. No doubt. And Macon Winslow is a guy that guys will be tracking. Um you know, and again, a little bit different right-handed hitter. Um, probably, you know, I, I don't want to say more power projection, but I think the hit ability would swing to Luke. Um, you know, I think the arms are probably pretty close. I think Luke, uh, um, Luke probably doesn't have the polish in terms of his, his, his exchange and release. Um, but, I, you know, scouts could go back and forth with those two. And I think that's a good thing for both of them too, because it allows them to just continue to play throughout the year. Yeah. I think it benefits both of them. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, we had we, an arm at, uh, at the super 62 that uh, uh, put up some big numbers. We did um, chase Meyer and probably a new name to a lot of North Carolina baseball fans. He's at combine Academy. Um, he's a product of Georgia and then transferred in this year to Combine. Right-handed pitcher, 6'3", 185. It's an athletic build. It's not overly sizey, you know. Um, it's, it's kind of a little bit more of a straight-line athleticism. There's looseness. Um, and then he was really the first arm because the, the event was <laughs> severely backloaded in terms of the arms. The arms early w- were good. And then Chase got on the mound. And then it amped up from there. And guys were kind of chasing him a little bit. We saw a good breaking ball beforehand, but a guy was 88, 91, 92, you know, throwing a good breaking ball. And then Chase got on the mound. And he was up to 94. He kind of sat 93, 94. It had some arm side run. Um, you know, but he's a strike thrower. And it was an athletic delivery. It was an easy arm action. It's a three-quarter release. There's elite arm speed through through there. Um, and he's spinning the ball, uh, 2,300 of a fastball. And then he starts breaking off breaking balls. And I, we had talked about, there was a young man from Utah. And his name slips my mind. Let me see it here in a minute. He, he's committed to Hawaii, which was, stood out to me because he was committed to Hawaii. I was like, good for him. Um, Ma, uh, Braden Marks, um, 2023 right-handed pitcher outfielder. But Braid spun the breaking ball. I mean, really spun the breaking ball. And talking to the area guy, our area guy in Utah was telling me some stories about his breaking ball. And then the next guy to get up on the mound was Chase. And he's, you know, he's lighting it up. And now he's got the best fastball of the event to that point. Sitting four, ball's got ride and run. And then he broke his breaking ball off. 80-82, 3,200 <laughs> spin rate. And you it was one of those things. And we've talked about this before. There's a lot going on in that building. There's guys getting loose. There's a, there's soccer games, you know, behind our event with curtains pulled down. There's, there's some noise There's volleyball games going behind where our catchers are set up. All the scouts are set up and the scouts are talking. They're watching, they're talking, they're watching and talking. He broke the first breaking ball off and it was like the building went quiet. I don't know if volleyball stopped playing or, but it got so quiet around us, and then boom, he broke another one. Boom, he broke, and it was tight and late, and you start going, okay, now now we're really going. And that was the first pitcher that you really saw at the event where you're, the projection is, okay, how high can this guy go in the draft? Because the stuff is really, really legit. Um, he was my big winner out of the event until one of the final arms it threw was uh, Blake Walters. 
2023 right-hander out of Illinois, is committed to uh, Arizona. And Blake's, you know, Illinois is kind of one of our home states there. It's right there next to where we host this thing in Chicago. It's an easy drive. He was just kind of a really good arm in Illinois. He's ranked number 15 in their state. And they're expecting to see twos and threes. Well, he starts getting loose at five and six. And then he's <laughs> bumping seven. And he's throwing a breaking ball. It's good enough, you know, especially for a dude with a big body. So Blake kind of stole the show there late. But up into that point, Chase Meyer with a fastball breaking ball combination, even showing a, a changeup that was in the zone and, and had some some hard ride. It really wasn't fade. And it was maybe a little bit firm, but it had some hard ride to the arm side. Chase was the big winner just up until Blake took the mound. So really good day for Chase. I know, I think he's actually scheduled to throw Sunday at Gaston uh, with Combines playing Gaston Community College. And Gaston's nationally ranked as a Division I uh, Community College, just split with Walter State, um, you know, a team that's perennially in the, in the World Series at Division I level for junior college. So I think Gaston's going to have their hands full for a couple of innings at least. Um, as Chase makes his first start of the year. So uh, that that may be one if you're a baseball fan and looking to get out and you can get over to Gaston Community College and where the uh, Sims Park right off of uh, is off 85, that, that may be a place to head on over on Sunday because it'll be a good matchup. Yeah, I look forward to seeing Chase during the, during the high school season. And um, I think he'll he'll put up better numbers in the year than he did in Chicago. Velocity well, and he, yeah, and we've we've seen seven. You know, in the summer when when he was really kind of locked in and going, we've seen a ninety-seven. So, um, but I think that's I think he's where he should be. I don't I don't think anybody in January or February should necessarily be peaking yet. Um, you know, you can get some adrenaline, and maybe that's what happened to Blake Walters is you get a little adrenaline and you get to where your peak may become later in the spring. But I think Chase is on a, on a great track to where he's at, and um, you know. He was he was somebody I was interested in meeting. He was in, I was interested in talking to, and um, you know, a very polite young man around me. And you know, yes sir, no sir, which you know, I, I, I not a big deal to me. I try not to think I'm old enough that I have to be a yes sir. Um, but you know, firm handshake, looked me in the eye, carried on a conversation, was able to talk about what he was doing pitching and where he's at in the development, where he's at getting ready for the year. And um, you know, those guys at Combine have done a good job with him. Um, but I, I was impressed with the person I got a chance to spend a little bit of time with there in Chicago as well. It's always an exciting time up there at the Super 60 and, and the buzz that, that it creates for for our staff and the scouts that are there and then obviously the players. I didn't show you this, but I got a little bit of swag. I got a little bit of that swag. This is the hat from the Super 60 <laughs> this year. So 60. It's, you know, yeah, just 60 across and then – figure out and then it's got our PPR I expect you to wear it. I expect again. you to wear that this weekend you get you got to wear it to the events this weekend I got I hey I'm gonna take care of my man yep. I got I got you well uh, and yeah the, the gold the gold looks good on me right for sure <laughs> did, you, did you do the did you did you do the money thing this year where you know you were um that they had set up last year they had uh, I know your I know your kids like they actually had a a um like a blow up circle enclosed room, but on the inside of the blow up, whatever the blow up thing was, it was like an air mattress, but it was uh, decked out in silver and gold glitter. So when those guys did it and it still did the rotation, they had the money gun. I I did the money gun last year. I was going to do the baseball or something, but I, my flight actually got delayed. So I didn't get in there until towards the end of the meetings on Saturday. And I was still out of it. I don't travel. I, I don't travel well. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm just going to kind of get through it. But I know Stevenson was in there. I know uh, Chase, I think, got in there because I've seen some of that stuff. I know our CEO, Duncan, got in there. I saw Shooter. Shooter got in there. So there's going to be some of those, I'm sure, popping up on, on social media. Um, you know, and our, our guys always do a good job trying to make those players, you know, a special level of player, making them feel comfortable on a night that honestly can be fairly stressful because they're getting ready for what's happening the next day. No doubt, a, a lot of them. That's their first time in front of so many, so many scouts, and not only scouts, but uh, real decision makers in the process. Right. And, and they get to meet them the night before. You know, there are some guys that, that are that they had a chance to talk to them, and so they know they're there. But um, let's transition because I don't want this thing to run too long. 
we've kind of hit our sweet spot with some of our viewership. I'm trying to track some of this YouTube stuff and podcast numbers and all that and becoming an expert on it. But to this weekend, um, our final preseason All-State, we're going to be in Kernersville Saturday night. Uh, approximately 100 players, 100 of the top players in North Carolina will be there. And then our pro case on Sunday. Um, Matt, what are you looking forward to with this weekend? Love being at DXT. Uh, we've, we've been there for several years now, and uh, they do a really good job taking care of us. And uh, another talented roster, Trey Roberts, former Future Games guy, will be there. Uh, he's got a chance to put up big numbers on the mound. Uh, Matt McKnight was at our top underclass games. Um, good infielder, good hitter. Excited to see the progress he's made. Uh, Connor Robertson, a uh, physical kid from, from Mooresville who's, who's always hit really well uh, when he's been in front of us. Uh, Nathan Bunch, he's a guy that's interesting to him. He's yeah. a big physical kid, but he actually, you look at his run times and, and he moves he moves very well. And uh, Logan D'Amico, Wake Forest commit will be there. Uh, Seth Tickle, another 2025 that uh, we've seen some. He's physical and he, he puts up good metrics. Yeah, I, this one's kind of, this is our going to be, it, just in terms of the overall roster, it's the best date. It's right before the high school season starts. Guys are really kind of amped up. You know, from the 2026s, Jackson Matthews out of Huff's Clemson commit. Um, you, you mentioned D'Amico. Um, uh, the, that that class, this is really our first chance over the course of uh, really a three-week period. We're going to see a bunch of these freshmen that we're going to be following for four years. And so it's not just about this weekend and this Saturday there. It's about going back and saying, okay, what did we see? Over the last four weeks, we saw some freaking dudes that are still undersized. They're still developing. But, you know, for me and you, what can be fun is, you know, who was on them first? You know, who did we ID and say, hey, this is a guy. This is a guy we have a chance to do. He's, he's going to do some special things, not just in high school, but over the course of the next eight years maybe. And being able to ID those guys early and, um, you know, going back and kind of digesting all of this stuff that we're seeing. So I'm excited about that. And then, you know, of course, our pro case is Sunday. Uh, I think we're going to have roughly 25 players. Um, I think 24 of the 25 are committed. Um, but the guys um, that are committed, we got a Rice commit, a South, multiple South Carolina commits, uh, Campbell, North Carolina, multiple North Carolina State, East Carolina, UNCG, uh, said Campbell. There's multiple Campbell guys. Um, the one name I'm really, really intrigued to see is Nate Britton. We've seen some stuff on on social media. He's a guy we tried to get in and see last year, and just it didn't work out. He didn't. He was thrown in relief, and we just missed him. Um, but Nate's six four one ninety, and he's going to put the overall mark in terms of best fastball velocity we've seen at this pro case. He's going to put that one in jeopardy. Is there anybody that's kind of standing out from the pro case side? One name maybe that you're really intrigued to see. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing Nick Parham again and Tristan Salinas, two left-handed hitters. Uh, love watching Parham take ground balls. And uh, Salinas has been good in front of us before and kind of interested to see if he's he's put on any weight to his frame. And he runs well and a uh, left-handed bat that has a chance to hit. I just so. want the people out there to realize that I asked for one. He gave me two. And both of Ooh. them from the mountain western side. He's he's kind of the guy that that, that home that home state that home area bias. Matt Payne well, is a biased I, evaluator. I've been on the eastern side of the state for the last three weeks, so I got to give the western <laughs> side some love a little bit. But uh, well, we, you know we love the pro case. It, it kind of feels like a celebration of our winter because it's all guys we've seen before, and we get to see them one more time before the high school season, and it's really laid back and. Um, it's, it's it's great for us, no doubt. And then, and it's we're we're in an environment we love being in. The people that run DXT do a tremendous job. Obviously, the Brandons, um, you know, and we'll give a full report on that place as we get back uh, next week. But um, super exciting time of year, and um, I think that's that's a great way to kind of close this podcast and, and show off is just looking forward to that future. So, um, Matt, you got anything else for me, or is it time to go get lunch? It's time to get lunch, and I'll uh, I'll see you in a couple of days. There you go. All right, I'm Brandon Hall. He's Matt Payne. This is the North Carolina Prep Baseball Report podcast. We'll be back with you next week. Remember, hit that subscribe and like button if you like what like what you saw. That way, you can follow along with us in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll talk to you again here next week.